for my 99th War Thunder aircraft review, I'm very pleased to show you the Tupolev Tu-2, one of the rarest aircraft in the game. Let's check it out. The Tu-2 family of aircraft was based on some earlier design studies done by the legendary aviation engineer Andrei Tupolev in the late 1930s. The basic premise for the plane was a high-speed, light-to-medium bomber that would be adaptable to a variety of roles in combat situations, including conventional-level bombing and dive bombing close to the battlefield. It was originally hoped that the Tu-2 would be able to match the speed of single-engine fighters when it was, you know, entering service, but there were numerous production quality problems with the intended Mikulin AM-37 engine, and the plane had to be reworked to use the Shvetsov M-82 engines instead. As a result, it took a few revisions to the basic design for the plane to reach its potential. It was common at the time for new aircraft designs to run into a lot of minor problems and flaws during the initial production batch, and the Tu-2 was no different, with less than a hundred being produced out of the original run before new versions started to enter production, incorporating a variety of technical fixes, as well as adaptations for roles such as torpedo bombing, reconnaissance, close air support, and even an interceptor version. After the initial quirks were worked out of the plane, the Tu-2 proved itself an invaluable addition to the Soviet war effort, and over 2,000 of them were eventually produced. Its simplistic internal structure, rugged design, and general dependability led to the Tu-2 being used as an engineering testbed for new aviation technologies well into the late 1950s, and it was still in limited use by China into the 1970s. In fact, the Tu-2 was even developed into a jet bomber, the Tu-12. While the Tu-12 never entered production, its development built up valuable expertise with multi-engine jet bombers in the Tupolev Design Bureau that would serve them very well on later projects. The last Soviet Tu-2s were retired in 1950. What we get in the game is the Tu-2, a dive bomber in rank 3 of the Soviet air tree at battle rating 4.3. This is an extremely rare vehicle, as it was only given out one time to players who were in the closed beta for War Thunder back in 2013 and had an active account for at least a year. I've been playing this game for a long time now, and I honestly didn't even realize how rare this plane was for several years after I got it, and I have confirmation that this will never be made available again. Unlike some of the other super rare aircraft, this one isn't a premium, even though it's over in the premium column, so I had to grind out all the upgrades on it normally back when I got it. The Tu-2 is armed with a pair of forward-firing 20mm Schwach cannons. The ammo belts it gets provide a pretty good selection, and my choice is usually for the universal belt, as it seems to be the best at taking down aircraft. For loadouts, it can carry a few different types of dumb bombs in various weight configurations. Now, the plane has a bomb bay, but it can also carry bombs externally, and an important caveat is that if it's taking more than two bombs, the bombs mounted under the inner wing sections will block the bomb bay doors from opening in realistic battles, so all the bombs can't be dropped in one group. The heaviest loadout of the four Fab 500s is enough to take out a strategic base in RB. The flight performance of the Tu-2 is actually pretty good for what it is, and considering its battle rating 4.3. This isn't any of the upgraded versions out in the tech tree, but it still does pretty well. It's reasonably fast, but most of the single-engine fighters can still catch it in a flat chase. 
The rate of climb is about on par for, you know, a twin-engined light bomber like this, and its dive performance is just outstanding. Remembering that this was intended as a dive bomber, the wings won't rip until well over 700 kilometers an hour, and the plane has air brakes, and it'll pull out of steep dives without any trouble. Something notable, the TU-2 is actually pretty maneuverable. It won't outturn Spitfires or anything, and its roll rate isn't very impressive. But it pulls hard, and if flown carefully, it can get the jump on people if they make some minor errors with their air combat maneuvering, or if they're just not very experienced. It's also really good in the dumb vertical loop rate contests that people seem to love getting into at low tiers. In terms of overall dogfight potential, the TU-2 can outperform almost all twin-engine fighters at this tier, basically every bomber, and a small number of underpowered single-engine fighters. All of the regular single-engine fighters, though, will eventually get the jump on it if flown correctly. The TU-2 can use WEP almost non-stop, and its engine cooling is very effective. It's also important to point out that this thing is optimized for low to medium level flight, and every aspect of its flight performance suffers pretty badly at higher altitudes. When I fly the TU-2 into battle, I often mix things up a little bit. I usually alternate between flying it as a high altitude bomber, remembering that its bomb load is unexpectedly potent, and playing as a more traditional dive bomber, where I'll fly in and dump the bombs, then attack aircraft as the opportunity presents itself. The plane has enough of a bomb load to take out a strategic base in most matches, but sometimes, if there are too many other bombers on my team, I'll just let them have the bases, and I'll dive in on some clusters of AI ground targets before going for player aircraft using the Schwach cannons. Speaking of which, it's entirely possible to use the TU-2 as a bomber interceptor, as the cannons can hit pretty hard at this BR, but if I'm being honest, I really don't do that too often. The real strength of the plane, though, is close air support. This is one of the few aircraft that I turn off the bombsite autopilot for, as it can get really accurate dive bombing drops, and each of its bombs drops individually. So, on a good run, the TU-2 can get three or four kills per flyout, which is exceptionally good for a low-tier close air support sortie. It's reasonably tough, ish, and can absorb a good amount of low-caliber machine gun fire from tank roof guns, basically anywhere except the cockpit, but it's still vulnerable to well-aimed conventional AAA. Overall, the TU-2 is just excellent at close air support, and personally, this is my primary use for the plane. Visually, I really like the TU-2. I've always had a soft spot for twin-engined props like this, and the TU-2 is a pretty good-looking one. There are only two skins, and I prefer the default solid green, but overall the visual detail is great, and the plane just has a good rugged look to it. Landing the TU-2 is much easier than a lot of similar aircraft. It can drop landing flaps and gear at a bit over 300 kilometers an hour, and the only real caveat is that it stalls out at around 160 or 170, so it's important to keep the speed up on landing. I haven't had the TU-2 nose over on me yet, so I usually just lock the brakes up after setting down. The cockpit is another low-poly placeholder, but I actually don't mind this one. The visibility for dogfighting is okay, and importantly, the glazed lower nose actually lets me do accurate bombing in VR. That's quite uncommon, so even with the crappy placeholder cockpit, I give the TU-2 a passing grade on the internals. To close out on the Tupolev TU-2. This plane has individual drops for its bombs, which is a huge advantage in close air support. Its cannons punch really hard at this BR. 
it's surprisingly maneuverable-ish. It gets an air spawn in realistic battles. It has really strong engine cooling. And it can perform very accurate dive bombing. However, it's still not the best dogfighter, obviously, and after two or three turns, its energy is going to be pretty low. Its cockpit isn't armored in any meaningful way. It doesn't get enough ammo for the Schwach cannons. And unfortunately, it's made out of a rare unobtainium alloy, so if you don't already have it, you'll never be able to get it. The final verdict on the Tu-2 is that this is a great aircraft that does its job very well and is exceptionally strong as a close air support aircraft. If you're an old fart like me who's lucky enough to have this thing, take it out for a fly now and then, because it's a lot of fun. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.